Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about five oestrogen rich foods which are great for the menopause. Now if you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all future videos. I've been asked a lot of questions about food and diet over the last few months and I do mention certain aspects in, in a lot of the videos that I do, but I thought that I would use the next month to really focus on different foods that can either help or hinder you during the menopause. So today, it's all about foods that are rich in what's called phytoestrogens. The role of oestrogen in the menopause is very important. It's a hormone that for most of us in, in our fertile years help to regulate the monthly menstrual cycle. Problem is that when we come to the menopause, the oestrogen continues to fall and it's that falling that can trigger a lot of the common um, low oestrogen symptoms such as hot flushes and sweats, poor sleep, joint aches and pains, irritability and mood swings. But there are a number of foods that contain phytoestrogens or plant oestrogens. And what they do is they mimic oestrogen that was in our body. They attach themselves to oestrogen receptor sites and that then gives us a little bit of an oestrogenic boost. And doing that during the menopause can help to even out the fall of oestrogen. It can help to support our oestrogen levels and make the symptoms um, less unpleasant, if you like. Now, according to the British Dietetic Association, if you start to add plant-based oestrogen foods into your diet, this is not a quick fix. It's going to take possibly two to three months before you start to really notice any difference. There's also the fact that the role of your friendly bacteria in your digestive tract play a huge part. Now, I've already done a link about friendly bacteria and the menopause. It's a really important issue, um, so please do click onto the link at some point and have a read at that because this in itself can make a huge difference to how you feel um, generally. The important thing here is that if you're going to eat these foods, you need to do it regularly. And they reckon that at least two to three times a day, every day you need some kind of these foods in order to get the best benefit. So, what are these foods or groups of foods? The first one is soya. Now, there are different forms of soya. There are what's called whole soya foods, so these are things like soya milk and cheese um, and yogurt and textured vegetable protein. I don't recommend these at all during the menopause. The reason being is they are very difficult to digest and a lot of women find when they start using them that they get the bloating, it can cause constipation and it can cause a lot of discomfort. If you look at the Far East where soya is a big part of the diet, the types of food you're looking at are what's called fermented soya foods. These are much easier to digest and the plant oestrogens in them are much more readily available for our bodies to make use of. So you're looking at foods such as miso, tempeh and natto. You will find most of these down your local health food shop um, so they're not too difficult to find nowadays. Second group are seeds. These are a wonderful addition to your diet. So it's things like linseeds, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, and pumpkin seeds. The one thing here is in order to be able to access the plant oestrogens, these need to be ground, not whole. Whole seeds tend to help with things like constipation, but if you want to get the hormonal effect from them, you need to grind them. The important thing here is that ground seeds go rancid very, very quickly. So I use them a lot in my diet and I have a little coffee grinder. I just buy packets of the single seeds. 
mix them all together I find it's a lot cheaper that way and then when I want them I just pop a couple of tablespoons into the coffee grinder they ground up and I eat them straight away you can put them in things like soups sprinkle them on salads put them in smoothies my favorite way is I have them with yogurt when I have yogurt for breakfast and I put a half a teaspoon or a teaspoonful of organic cocoa powder into the mix so I end up with lovely chocolate flavoured yogurts. This is a real um, sort of nice uh, treat. Number three is nuts. So you're looking at specific nuts like walnuts. Walnuts are also great for brain function. So a couple of walnuts a day as a, a mid-morning snack is a really great way to go. You can look at pistachios, you can look at peanuts. These are high calorie, so they're not ones where you're going to munch on them all day. Just a, a small handful of peanuts, a couple of walnuts or a small handful of pistachio nuts is enough to give you those kind of benefits. You can also look at fruits, but take these in moderation because obviously they're quite high in sugars. So it's things like peaches, um, your berries, and your dried fruit. Again, with dried fruit, you're only looking at maybe a couple of pieces a day, so don't go overboard with those ones. You can also look at your pulses and peas, so that would be peas, things like lentils, um, hummus is absolutely great, um, and you can have these in all sorts of things, you know, you can make stews or soups and put things like lentils and beans in just as a, a little daily uh, addition. And another one, another really important one, I'm, I'm adding six on, onto the list, is your dark green leafy vegetables and your fresh foods. Um, sprouting seeds, some of them, that's another great source of plant-based oestrogen. That's things like broccoli, alfalfa and red clover. I sprout regularly because it, it just means that I've got something fresh to pick at on a daily basis, especially if I run out of salads. We do a super menopause sprouted seed pack with our bio snacky seeds. And in that you've got the red clover, you've got the alfalfa, you've got the broccoli, and you've also, we also include a, a gourmet mix as well. So sprouting your own seeds is a super way of getting a nice daily dose of your plant-based estrogens. I do get asked, can you overdose on plant-based estrogens? It's highly unlikely. You would have to eat absolutely vast quantities um, you know, practically the whole day. So, you know, for the majority of women, if you're looking at ways to supplement your oestrogen during the menopause, then adding these foods in on a daily basis is going to be nothing but beneficial. So I hope this has been of help for you. Next week, I'm going to focus on more beneficial foods that can be easily added into your diet without too much fuss. So I will see you next week for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.